Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to a concept called index of refraction. Oops. So the index of refraction, what does that mean or what is that thing? So what we're looking at, <clears throat> this is representing a light wave. So hopefully you've watched my video about electromagnetic radiation and, and we're going to be considering the wave characteristics of uh, light here. So this is representing an incoming light ray. And this incoming waveform here, it's going to have a certain wavelength uh, that I call lambda 1 here. It's going to have a certain frequency that I'm going to call f1. And it's traveling at a speed c, which is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second. This picture represents maybe a block of glass or something like that, some sort of material like uh, glass, water, plastic that will that will allow uh, transmission of light through it. However, when light enters a material like this, it slows down. The velocity of light in this material is in fact going to be less than c, the speed of light. <clears throat> right? Now, that has an effect on the uh, waveform here. You'll notice that I that I've decreased the wavelength of the light. The relationship, remember, for waves is um, velocity equals frequency times wavelength. This definitely changes. This drops when the light enters this region. The wavelength also has to change, but the frequency doesn't. The frequency stays constant. And the reason the frequency has to stay constant is this. Frequency is number of waves per second. If I if I picked a, you know, three spots like here, here, and here, the same number of waves have to go past that spot in the same time frame. If I pick a time frame like, you know, one second, I count the number of waves that go by here, the number of waves that go by here, and the number of waves that go by here. They have to be the same. If they're not, that means that these waveforms are either piling up or, or disappearing somehow. So the frequency here is, is a value that is not going to change. Since the velocity goes down, frequency doesn't change, that means the wavelength has to also go down. So we're going to have a new wavelength inside of here, and it's going to be some number less than the incoming wavelength, which I'm going to call lambda 1. So in the this region itself, the frequency is the same as the first frequency. I'll just call that f1 but the velocity and wavelength drop. Now here's where the index of refraction comes in. This quantity called the index of refraction is a experimental measurement uh, reflecting really how much the wave uh, slows down. Here's how it's defined. The index of refraction is defined as the ratio C over V, right, where C is the speed of light in vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. V is the speed of light in the medium. Right? And, and then again, n here is what's called the index of refraction. You'll notice it's the ratio to velocities, <clears throat> and that means it's dimensionless because the top and bottom will you know, have the same units. Some common index of refractions. Uh, index of refraction of glass, it, you know, it varies quite a bit with, with the type of glass, but it's you know, right around, I think, around 1.6 is a real common value. But again, I'm sure there's glass out there where it's 1.7, 1.8. There's probably other glass where it's 1.5, 1.4. But whenever I think of the index refraction of glass, 1.6 always comes to mind or something close to that. Water is a real common one. The index refraction of water is approximately 1.3. Might be about 1.33, but I'm just going to say 1.3 in this example. All right. So. I guess I'll just write in this video, uh, kind of do a numerical uh, example here. So let's say we've got an incoming uh, incoming light that has a wavelength of, oh, I don't know, let's say 800, 900 nanometers. 900 nanometer. Now the nanometer is a common unit for uh, radiation uh, wavelengths. Nano means 10 to the minus ninth. So this incoming waveform has a uh, wavelength of 900 nanometers. And what we're going to do is calculate its speed and its wavelength inside of this glass. So we'll start with the speed. Since index refraction is uh, C over V, V, it's not too tough an algebra problem to show, the V has to equal uh, C over N. So in this example, that would be 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second, 
over n. Now if I'm assuming this is glass, I would use 1.6. And we get a value of about, if you'll bear with me here for a moment, um, So I get about 1.88, I'm rounding that to two, two sig figs, times 10 to the eighth meter per second. <clears throat> so there's our new speed, the speed of that wave uh, inside, of, uh, inside of the glass. Now, to calculate the new wavelength, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look here. Knowing that I already know a velocity, uh, if I have a frequency, I can calculate a wavelength. So I'm going to look here and go, hmm, I need a frequency. Well, remember, the frequency is the one that doesn't change here. So what I'm going to do is go back to this. I'm going to use this 900 nanometers to calculate the frequency of the radiation as it enters the glass. Uh, so using uh, this relationship, the C, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second, is going to equal the frequency that we do not know times the wavelength, and the wavelength we do know. 900 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. So the frequency is going to equal, if you give me a moment here, all right, so give me a moment. I don't have a very good calculator. Okay, so what I get here is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the, if you give me just a moment, fourteenth. 3.3 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So this is the frequency of the incoming light when it uh, gets to here. So, and I got that by taking 3 times 10 to the 8th and dividing by 900 times 10 to the minus 9th. So, Hopefully, hopefully that worked out all right. Um, now I think I'll move on. So to, cu to calculate the wavelength, what I'm going to do is basically use this relationship again, except I'm going to use my new velocity now. So we're going to have 1.88 uh, times 10 to the eighth meter per second equals the frequency, which we know is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 14th hertz times the new wavelength, which we're looking for. So now it's just a matter of solving for our new wavelength. Give me a moment. small little calculator here, hold on. One. All right, let me write it like this. What I get is 0.57 times 10 to the, now I'm gonna do the powers of 10. If we take 10 to the eighth, divide that by 10 to the 14th, we get 10 to the um, negative six meters. And let me put that back to nanometers. So if I shift this three to the right, we're gonna have 570 times 10 to the minus ninth meters, or in other words, 570 nanometers. So hopefully um, hopefully this example helps demonstrate these concepts. Um, you notice that the wavelength was cut you know, roughly in half, or almost in half by about 40%, by about the same proportion as the velocity. So anyway, this is how you uh, calculate the velocity of light in a medium using the index refraction. And then this relationship allows us to calculate, you know, knowing a f wavelength, calculate frequency at any point as long as we know the velocity. So anyway, hope this video helps. Have a great day.